Hi everyone, it's Andy at Trade Skills for You. I'm down at our centre in Gatwick and I'm here with Carl because we're putting some electric vehicle charging points in. So I'm going to ask Carl if he would just explain to us uh, how you're going to do this. Carl, I noticed that we've got a big hole in the ground here. <laughs> well, because they're floor mounted units, the key to the whole thing is a big bed of concrete. And in that bed of concrete, we have to bury a galvanised routing kit we always want to try and make the routing kit below the level of the concrete so we can shim around the edges when we put the charger on. So we've dug, as you can see, quite a big hole, probably oversized. We've put a bit of shuttering around and the, pen, the, the black mark for there is going to be the height of my concrete. So if I then get my routing kit and we drop that in, That is now the height. So if I'd have put the cables through and up and out of the hole, we can now fill the concrete going around that. You want to try and get 150 to, 100 to 200 mil of concrete all the way around with the full depth of the routing kit. Then try and form a slab above about 100 mil, 80, 100 mil thick then we've got a nice solid base to work from. No matter what we do, we've got a solid base and we can shim and we can level everything we need to do and it's not going to go up, not going to move. What size cable have you been using, mate? On, on this one, because our, where the consumer unit is, is, is a fair away, this is a 10 mil high tough. We find high tough is better to use with this particular brand because there's not many places to actually terminate the SWA gland in the unit. And, and here, what, what we've also got, as you can see, we've got a data cable run out to it, because I think Trade Skills for You may link this up so that it goes on the national network so anyone can pull up and charge their cars. Obviously, the tariffs and everything like that are all set by Trade Skills for You, but a lot of companies like to use this particular charger to be able to do that to offer this service to the public. Carl, I noticed that you've got one prepared earlier. Just like to talk us through what's happening here, mate, would you? Well, as we showed you on the previous one, the shuttering has now been removed and we've now got a very big, heavy, solid concrete base that's going to take the weight of our EV charger. As you can see, the cabling is coming out of the routing kit and the facility to be able to plug the charger directly in to your structured cabling in your office so that when guests anyone like that is turning up they can charge their car and they can be charged for charging their car in total we try and put as you can see by the size of the block probably 0.75 to 0.8 of a cubic meter of concrete in you want to leave it for two or three days to cure to make sure that it's in there good solid and cured uh, okay why the ridge here? Right, what we do there is, as you can see on the, on the previous one, we, we have a little ridge because the routing kit is size A, the base of the unit is quite a lot bigger. And if the routing kit matches up there, it means the stability of the base is that much smaller. Okay. Whereas where it's below now, the base of the unit is where the stability is cre created and you're now bolting down onto that. Excellent, excellent. Shall we uh, have a look at the charging post itself then? Yes, we certainly can do. <laughs> okay, let's have a look then. Right, if you can lift these out for me. As you can see, as these are quite an expensive piece of kit, they're very, very, very well packed. So, weight-wise, it is only a one-man lift, but because they are quite awkward, I'd always recommend having a second person sure, yeah. just to help stabilise the weight. So it's really simple. We're literally going to take out the polystyrenes like that. And now it's, we're going to go, if you could go at that end there, Andy, then we're literally going to try and lift it out like that. We're going to put the bottom down. Now I'm going to stand her up. As you can see, they're quite a piece of kit. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're just going to do that to there. And we're going to use 
that polystyrene bit as a support, just really try and protect the product. No, that should be fine. So we're going to get it to there, then literally just pull that to the halfway mark. Then we're going to lay it down on there, protecting the product. These never open easy, so a little screwdriver in there. And there we are there. Terminals at the bottom, and you can now see our plate that we've got to clamp down onto, yep. and the rubber bung in the bottom. All right, Carl, what's right. next? So we've cut our bung. What we've done is we've used two of the packaging pieces, which are nice and soft, to put over near where our workspace is where we do. Andy, could you just give me a hand to lift Certainly. it to it? We want to get the base as near to our routing kit as possible, like that. There we are. Now we can open up our unit. Poke our cables into the unit, like so. Now we're ready, so we just to stand it up and put it onto its locator studs. Okay. This, you can do it on your own, but with two people, it's an awful lot easier. Okay. Put that in there, so we put that down. So you're probably going to need to leave that, so leave, to leave that, leave that, course, leave yeah. that flapping around so you yeah. can watch it. So our first movement's going to be is take it, grab on the inside, and just take it nearer to our base. We can now take up our slack, like so. So now comes the fun bit. We need to stand it up and get it onto its locator studs. Okay. Sometimes it goes straight in. Sometimes they can be a Bit of a pain. Do you want my help? Yeah, if you could just to help help with the weight. So we just want to get it on that. Now just crank it up, slowly taking the slack like that. That's it. There we are. As I said, sometimes it can be a little bit awkward. So what we want to do now is safety, just get a couple of nuts and a couple of washers on there just to, so if we do have a bit of wind, it's not gonna go anywhere. Right, okay, now we've got to strip the cables and terminate them. Um, we've got our, our Cat6 data cable here that's just in for future. It's whether the client decides to put it on, on the map or not is up to them. So we'll just move that out of the way for the minute. So we just need to strip this high tough, which is never the greatest of cable to strip in front of people in the cold. This EV charging post has a protective device built in in case the pen conductor fails. So Carl has terminated the CPC to the earthing terminal in the post and you can see a link to the door to maintain continuity. I'm just, I've, I've tightened them up, so now I'm just going to give them a second tighten before I put the isolation cover on and, and close her up. And you can see where the incoming line and neutral conductors have been terminated. It's good practice to check the tightness of all the screws like Carl is doing here. Just go around checking they're all secure. Carl, thanks very much for showing us how to install that post. Uh, all that remains now is I'd better get it tested. Lovely, no problem at all. Thanks very much. See you later. Thank you.